welcome learners to the series of the lectures on MOS and MOSFET. Myself, Arpon Deyashi, from the Department of Electronics and Communication Engineering in RCC Institute of Information Technology, welcome you all to the lecture series of MOS and MOSFET. I have already covered three lectures on the MOS and this is the third lecture on the MOSFET. And I have already announced that it will be a seven lecture series. So this is the penultimate lecture and the part two par portion of the electrical characteristics of MOSFET. If I recapitulate the journey, which have started from the uh, one month back and I have started the course on MOS capacitor, in the first lecture, I have basically discussed about the band diagram of the so-called MOS structure. And precisely, I have taken aluminum, silicon dioxide, silicon, uh, just to make the familiarization with the ordinary MOS structure, the conventional MOS. And I have used several boundary conditions later. For application of different biases, I have shown the band diagram and later solved the Poisson's equation to get the QV characteristics as well as uh, you can also get about the CV characteristics. In my lecture 2, I have shown the details QV characteristic, how it is formulated the charge profile at different conditions, accumulation, flat band, depletion and inversion. And in the third lecture of MOS capacitor, I have shown the CV characteristics. And both the high frequency and low frequency characteristics curve are details discussed. If you have sight, uh, some concept has to be brushed again, just go to my YouTube channel in the playlist of electron device and those lectures are available. However, once I have started the MOSFET, I have shown why, how the basically the capacitive structure can be modified in the form of a transistor that is in my fourth lecture. And I have also shown why a fourth terminal transistor can be converted into a three terminal device just because of the body effect. And that's why source and body are short circuited. And that details is shown. And with that, I have just started the fifth in the last week and I have discussed the part one of the electrical characteristics where I have shown the derivation, the mathematical details of getting the electric field, uh, expression of depletion region, the immobile charge concentration at the depletion and inversion conditions and the threshold voltage variation. And later after the threshold voltage calculation, uh, I have also shown the uh, role of the body effect on the shift of threshold and that is one of the important factor because I want to correlate the lecture 4 and 5. And the major part of the electrical characteristics of any uh, semiconductor device should be the current voltage profile. So today in the sixth lecture, I will discuss in details the electrical characteristics of the MOSFET, the precisely the IV characteristics. And I have shown that the channel formation in the MOSFET is possible only in the inversion region through the band diagram. Just correlate with my lecture 1 to lecture 5, I have shown the details of the inversion condition. And if you have some sort of say problem, then uh, we can we can uh, move uh, slightly bit to details so that we can again go through the brush up of the knowledge, the inversion condition. 
no problem i have also shown the bending of the band diagram and you know the channel formation it is thus the part uh, uh, you can draw an imaginary line from the point of inversion and naturally you will get that very easily it's not a matter very simple you can get the inversion part uh, you can draw a hypothetical line and that will be your NP region uh, which I am just showing this is my dotted line and that's the colored portion that means this is my basically N region because in that re region if you analyze with the basic knowledge of the band diagram you will find that extrinsic Fermi level is close to the conduction band and above the intrinsic Fermi level so it's very simple that it will be a type of n type material and the rest part is obviously the p type so it's very simple that with a simple animation we can just justify the structure and naturally uh, once you have the structure just if you try to simply rotate it just imagine that band diagram is rotated where the conducting region is at the top then you will get the four layer structure the conductor insulator in semiconductor and p and also you will get the two potentials the surface and the fermi potentials uh, i think you know but i am just recapitulating so fermi potential is nothing but the difference between the intrinsic and extrinsic fermi level at the bulk region and surface potential is total bending of the intrinsic fermi level measured at the insulator semiconductor interface so that's very simple that psi s and psi f can be measured uh, i think there will be no problem so with that i think uh, i am trying to design the say basic structure just formation of the fundamental structure in a coordinate system uh, otherwise we can't put it in the mathematical format so for that purpose i am just giving you the coordinate system yz this is the semiconducting substrate there will be n channel then the insulating region the conducting region the gate and body bias and naturally the source and drain i am just giving the names at first is gdb because you know this will be my direction of the uh, structure so far and naturally the there will be biases in the source and drain regions so this is a very simple schematic structure and my length of the channel is uh, l which is also shown here and that gives the simple model of a conventional MOSFET naturally the p substrate means source and drain regions will be n plus i have not considered the formation of the depletion region beneath the channel it will come later on when we will actually go to the detailed design but the conductor insulator and the channel formation which is a part of the substrate that's shown here and i am taking say uh, movement of the carriers along y-axis and the structure vertical direction say z-axis you can take any cartesian coordinate system for your analysis and that doesn't matter it's very simple so you can put it in that way if you like and once this uh, semiconducting substrate and the channel insulator conductor everything you have obtained so based on that we will move for the mathematical analysis that means the 
IV characteristics of the MOSFET. So, in this very short lecture, I want to go for first the boundary conditions. And according to the figure, you will find that source potential will be obviously zero because negative, and naturally it will be connected to the body because shorts and body are short circuited. I am not showing in that in more details, but I think I have discussed the body effect in the lecture 4, so you know the fact. So Vc, that means the arbitrary is a channel potential at y equals to 0. And what is y equals to 0? It is the junction of the source and channel. So where the carrier journey will start from the source end, that's the starting line. And that should be the source potential and it becomes zero and similarly where they will be collected at the drain that means their finishing line in the channel if you consider it as a race a famous sport in the athletics so at the finishing line that means at y equals to l that channel potential is vds simple the difference between drain to source potential as simple as per the ohm's law va minus vv and obviously, if you want to conduct the current, your gate to source voltage, that means the vertical voltage should be greater than threshold. Otherwise, you can't form the inversion region. So, it's very simple that you have to consider these boundary conditions in order to start your mathematical model for the IV characteristics as already written here. So for that part, let me move slowly and then we can go for the carrier flow and naturally as per our structure, the carrier flow is one dimensional. So what will be the total mobile electron charge in the surface? We know that charge is nothing but capacitance into voltage but there is a point please try to remember and I presume that everybody knows the dimensional analysis better so capacitance in the dielectric is nothing but measured as capacitance per unit area but if you go for your basic definition of the charge it's nothing but capacitance multiplied by voltage. So what it will be? It should be capacitance when it becomes capacitance per area. Then it should be multiplied by area. But you are assuming one dimensional carrier flow if you remember. And that means very simple the amount of mobile charge you are considering in the inversion layer it should be the charge per unit length so once you decide the term that total mobile electron charge in the surface of inversion layer it should be per unit length that means though in the left hand side you are writing it as a charge but it is simple it is not the actual coulomb it is the charge per unit length and if it is charge per unit length then naturally capacitance will not be multiplied by area but it will be multiplied by length now in a mosfet your area is l into w that means length multiplied by width but you are varying the voltage across length so you can't multiply it by length so naturally the dimension you have to accommodate is the width 
So the variable charge is width multiplied dielectric capacitance multiplied by the voltage function. Now there will be a question of the voltage function also. The voltage value is a very important factor here. You can't write any in the form because please think. It's very carefully if you try to calculate the voltage it's the effective voltage you are considering and what is that? The VGS is the gate voltage but what is the effective gate voltage is VGS minus VTO. But where you are measuring? VGS you are measuring at the source channel terminal that junction. So VGS minus VTO is nothing but the voltage at that point. So what will be the voltage at any arbitrary point inside the channel. So it will be VGS minus VTO again a potential drop so it will be negative that will be a channel potential at any arbitrary point Y. So the total potential will be VGS minus VTO minus VCY as a function of Y. That voltage function multiplied by CD into W that gives the total mobile electron charge in the surface. And once you know that, this factor that, okay, fine, I know this thing so far. So what you will go for the current calculation and current calculation is very simple then ID that will be charge multiplied by velocity and it will be negative, very simple because uh, the flow of current and movement of the charge are in opposite. So I have substituted the value of ID, but there will be an assumption. The threshold voltage, the VTO you are considering, it should be independent of dimension at this point. Later you will find that there are several factors. But at that juncture I am considering VTO as independent. Of dimension. So once I have substituted that value then I have also know that uh, Vn that velocity is nothing but mobility multiplied by electric field. Field in the direction of drain and source so that region and field is nothing but negative gradient of potential minus grad phi so if I substitute it will be minus mu n d dy of v c y. So I am substituting the velocity value in the expression of drain current. And I am getting an expression so far. So if I put uh, um, or better multiply both sides by dy then id into dy is wcd into that factor and naturally you have to integrate it in order to solve and already separation of variable is obtained one side it will be length another side it will be voltage so if i integrate from 0 to l then another side i will get a variation of voltage 0 to vd because the boundary condition you know that at length equals to 0 the voltage is 0 channel potential at length equals to L the channel potential is VD so if I integrate it very simple I will get the expression of ID which is mu C D W by L VGS minus VTO into VD minus half VD square or if I take half as outside then the next equation which will be in the red box or orange box and that will be the IV characteristics of the MOSFET under active condition. So once I know it then 
I can write in the form that mu c w by l, this is known as beta. Now, what is beta? Beta is called performance parameter. Now, if you look closely, the beta is a product of three parameters, mu, c and w by l. What is mu? Mu is the mobility, that means it is the material parameter. What is CD? CD is the dielectric capacitance, that means it is the fabrication parameter. And W by L, it is the aspect ratio, that means it is the design parameter. So the beta, the performance parameter, is a product of material parameter, fabrication parameter and design parameter. And that gives idea as half beta multiplied by the voltage function 2 into Vgs minus Vto into Vd minus Vd square. And that's the significance of beta because these three parameters are extremely essential in order to investigate the property of a MOSFET. And that's why it is called performance parameter. Now, if you go for the drain voltage less than the effective gate voltage, that means the applied horizontal voltage is less than the effective vertical voltage, then naturally the square term will be eliminated. And you will get ideas proportional to Vd, very simple because the linear term will dominate and if that happened and if your drain voltage is greater than that naturally the parabolic term will dominate and id proportional to vd square so let's let's go for a uh, plotting of this device and very simple this is parabolic and id is minus vd square means the parabolic will be towards the x axis and ultimately will cross wow so increase of voltage decrease in current it's a negative resistance device no never we have made a derivation till now but ultimately what we find that current again goes to zero at higher voltage after achieving the peak. That's not possible. We know the MOSFET characteristics that uh, they will achieve the saturation condition, but why? Is that equation erroneous? Boundary condition erroneous? The structure erroneous? Our assumptions are something wrong? No. That's not the ultimate problem okay at that point let's try to calculate the peak value at peak point naturally the drain voltage will becomes equal to the effective gate voltage from the iv characteristics very simple and that peak current idp p stands for peak it will be half beta into vgs minus vto square very simple I'm not going into that details. Uh, you will get the parabola peak. Perfect. Now, so peak is nothing but it is the pinch of condition. Everybody knows from the class of JFET also. So what happened after pinch off? I will show the four channel design. The first one is the channel at normal. Fine. That's the channel I have drawn in the schematic in the third slide. But once you have achieved the peak, naturally the you will get a triangle. At peak, your pinch up point is exactly at the drain channel junction. If you increase the bias as per the Jeffett concept, Similarly here, the pinch up point will try to move towards the source. So go for the third figure. That means the left bottom corner. Let delta L is the shift of pinch up point towards the source. So effective channel length is not L, it will be L prime, something else. 
then L equals to L prime plus delta L. That's not a problem. Very simple. And if you push further, the delta L starts to increase and L prime starts to decrease. That is the right bottom corner. That is the fourth picture. And if you have this IV characteristics of the MOSFET, then the after this modulation of the channel length, the phenomenon will be called channel length modulation. So previous equation will be replaced, just modified, L will be replaced by L prime. And ID will be IDS. So what will be L prime? L prime will be L minus delta L as per the figure. And if that happened, then I have multiplied and divided uh, right hand side by L. So if you look out the green part, the green box, it is nothing but ID, the drain current, previous active region current. So IDS is ID into L by L minus delta L. And simply, I have divided it by L and taking the first order binomial expansion IDS equals to ID into 1 plus del L by L. Now it has a significance because del L is proportional to VDS, very simple. I have already shown in the diagram. L is constant, so del L by L also becomes constant to VDS. So I am naming the constant as lambda. Once you know this it is lambda, then ID will S will be ID into 1 plus lambda VDS. And if I substitute the value of ID, the last expression which is in the pink color box, that will be the expression of IDS. And this is the IV characteristics under the saturation condition. Now let me explain. The first part, the ID is constant at peak. So if VDS increases, if lambda is extremely small, then IDS is almost parallel to the x-axis VDS with a very small tilt. And that's why you will get a characteristic curve like this. It's not bended. It will be parallel to x-axis and that will be your IV characteristic curve. And the lambda is called channel length modulation parameter. And that explains quite satisfactorily our known saturation characteristics curve. So IV characteristics of the MOSFET, there are two equations, one explicit for the active, another for saturation, as like the same JFET. And the saturation condition explains why it becomes flatter with the x-axis. An active region varied up to the pinch of condition, not after the pinch of. So that completes the part two of the electrical characteristics of the MOSFET. Remind the point that lambda is called channel length modulation parameter. Unit is one by volt. Very simple because lambda into VDS should be dimensionless. So lambda is one by volt. So in the next lecture, that will be the last lecture of this series, I will go for CMOS design and different circuit designs using CMOS. So thank you all here.